There are actually like four, con four components to the, to the flamer. There is the, uh, the, the flaming, the flame heads themselves, there's the frame, there's the tank, and then there's the regulating mechanisms. Uh, the regulator consists of, uh, of a solenoid activated valve which simply turns the machine on or off. This tank, the tank is really important. Uh, it, it has to be, you can't just use a regular propane tank that you see standing around greenhouses. This has to be a motor fuel tank and they're not so easy to get to, to locate. This was a used one we got pretty cheap, but they cost them about new, they cost about $700. About $700. Uh, you know, as you can see, it holds about 40 gallons of, of fuel. Um, I figure it takes about uh, about $19, 19 to $20 an acre worth of fuel. This device is a burn, is, uses liquid propane as opposed to gas, and it, it, that, that's very significant because one of the difficulties that the, some of the European burners have is that using, using uh, gas means that they, they get too cold from the evaporation of all the gas. These burners are much different. They, they move the, 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 the propane in a liquid form all the way down to the burners before it's actually burned so that, they're, the, the, so that there's, no, uh, there's no super cooling of the lines. Uh, the cool, the uh, expansion of the gas just before it burns all takes place right down at the bottom of the burners. Uh, each burner is a 250,000 BTU burner. And that's, uh, I, I, it's pretty arbitrary what you, what you need. It depends on the width of the bed. This seems to be sufficient uh, for, my, for, my, uh, for my uses. It covers a 52-inch bed quite nicely. Uh, sometimes I use the burner for, for a single row crop, in which case I don't even use the outside, uh, the outside two burners, on, on the, the outside four burners, only use the two inside ones and, 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 tip, and tilt them so that they direct the flame di right down to a single row down, in the, down below there. So it, it's very versatile. There's lots of different uses for it. Uh, this is a good example of, of, uh, of what the flamer does. On, on my left here, um, is, an, is a bed. These beds uh, are, are, were prepared at the, the same time, the one on the right and the one on the left, were prepared at the same time. They were uh, <clears throat> tilled and then rolled and marked. They use this roller, you can, you can see it uh, just barely. There's a, there are marks, the three rows uh, are marked out and that's to guide my planter when I plant. I plant by hand uh, with a push planter. And um, I flamed this bed about three days ago and it looked identical to this bed over here. Uh, and as you can see, there, there are hardly any weeds left. Now there are, there are new weeds emerging. What I will do now at this point is, uh, is I'll, I'll plant the crop in this, in this bed and then wait a few days before the crop comes up and flame it again. That's gonna get any weeds that germinate between now and the time I flame. It also will get rid of these few little ones. You can't even see them. They're tiny little weeds that have germinated since I flamed it last time. I think, think one of the few downsides to, uh, to, to using this, this machine uh, it concerns safety. There's a lot of energy in here and um, it has the potential for being pretty, pretty dangerous. Uh, I think that uh, it's especially important that, that all the valves are tight and that the pins are all in and everything. If this thing dropped off or something broke, it could be a real, a real disaster. I think the flame weeder has a real place in our operation here. Uh, there are some, you know, there are some, there are some improvements and, and, and there are some techniques that I need to work on, but I think I mean, it's not enough alone, but in conjunction with a, a proper and appropriate uh, and timely tillage, uh, I, I think it's indispensable. I find, I find that I'm using it, finding more and more uses for it uh, every year, and I, I certainly uh, am very encouraged uh, by what I've discovered. Vegetable farmers and their weed control machines. In this video, we visit nine vegetable farms in three New England states to talk with growers about their weed control equipment and how it's used. They will describe a variety of cultivation tools and approaches to weed control. Hopefully, their knowledge and experience will help you get a better understanding of cultivation equipment and techniques.
matching cultivation tools to the soils, crops, weeds, and other particulars of a farm can be a complex task. Growers that are trying to reduce or eliminate their reliance on herbicides need information that will help them make good decisions about cultivation and weed control. Extension, research, and the private sector working together can generate that kind of information. Funded in part by the USDA Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program, promoting environmentally sound and economically viable agriculture. This video was produced by Vern Grubinger, University of Vermont Extension System, and Mary Jane Else, University of Massachusetts Agroecology Program.